So let's begin with a good example of where exemplary healthcare records have really been the pivotal uh, issue in relation to the decision on a major case that occurred some years ago. And this case was the Spasovich v Sydney Aventus Hospital. Now, Mr. Spasovich, the plaintiff, was a man who uh, presented to Sydney Aventus Hospital and he had a, a headache. Now, it was actually caused by a small cerebral hemorrhage uh, in his brain. Now, they didn't, they found that out, you know, later. But he made the claim that the nurses and doctors failed to assess and treat him properly. He was discharged from hospital uh, without that hemorrhage being diagnosed. And later on the same day, he suffered a major hemorrhage, which caused him to avert very serious permanent disability. So that was the civil suit that he launched as a result of the harm that occurred to him. Now, what was interesting about this case was that the healthcare records were a central plank of the evidence offered in defence by the defendant or the hospital, which was Sydney Aventus Hospital. And just to summarise, essentially, um, the judge looked at all the progress notes, all the medical records in relation to this case, particularly the hospital notes, and found them to be extremely reliable and an accurate portrayal of the events that happened during uh, Mr. Spazovich's stay in the hospital. And he actually said, um, you know, that they were concluded that in general, the records, he's accepted them as being an accurate record of the matters purportedly recorded in them. And he said they were very, you know, contemporaneous, uh, they were progressive, and they were complete. And as he said, quote, they were quite detailed and not merely perfunctory. And this was also backed up by hearing the evidence from many of the nurses who obviously made those notations. And they gave evidence, and he quoted, I formed a general generally favourable impression of those of those nurses so that you know what they were saying verbally was backed up by what they'd written in the notes and this case provides a really good example of how good records um, made with the sole purpose of providing good nursing care not only furnished evidence as to the existence of good nursing care but also enabled the judge to find both the written and verbal evidence provided by the nurses to be reliable. So it was documented, therefore it was done, so it was reliable. In contrast, a very poor example, or a good example of poor documentation, is the, the very infamous or landmark case of McCabe versus Auburn District Hospital. This case is cited quite in detail in your text, so you can read that up. We'll also cover that in the tutes. But just to summarise, Mark McCabe was a 20-year-old year old, uh, patient, and he came in for a routine appendicectomy. And his recovery was not routine. Basically, he was brewing a huge infection. Now, there was a... This was a sentinel event, the death of this young man. Um, but there was many factors involved. But one of the main things to come through was the accuracy and reliability of the nursing and medical notes. It was just atrocious. Okay, and the judge actually made criticism of the accuracy and reliability of both the nursing and the medical notes. He said, quote, I am of the view that the hospital notes are not reliable. In particular, there is unreliability in recording the manifest and observable continuing deterioration of the deceased condition. 
I am satisfied that the routine temperature checks, even if accurate as to scale, were accompanied by failure to note what was there to be seen, namely the deceased was perspirant and hot. This was evident even to non-medical appreciation. So there was lots of um, substandard care given. And also in relation to the notes, the actual factual obs that were written didn't match what was occurring with the patient, which was a whole other issue there. So lots and lots of examples of, you know, uh, breach of duty of care, failure to recognise a deteriorating patient. And in fact, Mark's case was such a an awful one that it was, you know, obviously reported through the coroner. He made rep recommendations. But again, it's from those recommendations that, you know, the between the flags and everything emanated. Mark's case happened back in the 80s. So, yes, just dreadful. But uh, in that case, the hospital was held vicariously liable. So remembering vicarious liability, the hospital was made responsible in that they had to pay compensation or damages to Mark's family. And it was a substantial amount in, in that case, uh, even though it was a cascade of events. There was lots of people who were substandard in terms of communication, but the central point was the documentation. Unfortunately, on numerous occasions, the poor quality of nursing records has meant that the courts have, and quite understandably, taken them literally and found their depiction of nursing care wanting. And here's just some examples of poor documentation. And when you realise that judges rely on written evidence, uh, meaning that nurses who do not produce accurate records will find it very difficult to have their account of a particular incident treated as legitimate if it is inconsistent with the written evidence. Now, from a historical perspective, nursing has traditionally been an oral profession, if you like, I suppose, in that We've relied very heavily on verbal handovers and so on. And nursing from, you know, over time and traditionally, nursing records and writing have never been actually the major focus of authenticity for nurses. And as I've said, greater reliance has traditionally been given to oral handovers and oral communication forms. I mean, that's why sometimes the difficulty with um, sort of with doctors, you know, there have always been a much more written form and, and everything else. So sometimes it's they've been, their evidence has been given more credence, if you like. But certainly from contemporary times, it's, you know, the exact opposite. Um, and it just reinforces to you now that the significance that patient records, healthcare records, have in legal proceeding. And it also underscores the importance for nursing staff uh, in placing a really, you know, focused attempt on making sure that your recordings are accurate, objective and timely. And they really do adhere to the standards or principles for good documentation. So the implications of not, it affects your credibility of both you as an individual and as the profession as a whole. As I've said, judges rely on written evidence. If it wasn't documented, it wasn't done. So extremely important.